welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Angela Yeager. Got a great episode for you today. I'm super excited to have two of my best film pals here together, uh, Haley Ringel and Ernie Kiros. Welcome to the show, both of you. Hello. And Hello. This, is a, this is really special because Haley is actually the reason I met Ernie. As they were already longtime friends. And then Haley, when we went to COVID and I was, when we went to COVID, when COVID happened and I went to Zoom <laughs> for the show, she said, I know someone that would be great for real film snobs. He has snobby taste like you and likes <laughs> movies that I hate like you do, Angela. <laughs> That's exactly what she said to me. And so I, and she turned out to be right. So Ernie and I hit it off right away. And we do indeed like the snobby movies that other people hate. And so it's it's been a wonderful friendship. And of course, as everyone who's been watching the show for a while knows, Haley's one of my longtime friends and we love movies and music and art and all sorts of things like that in common food, you know, all the good important things in life. So I'm super excited to have you both here today because you're gonna talk about the Telluride Film Festival Festival, which I think you've gone to for, I don't know, how many years has it been now, both of you? For uh, me, I think it's four years. Since 2017 for me. So whatever that, you know, not kind of, they skipped the COVID year 2020, but they did it's like come back, five years, uh, maybe. Yeah. 2021. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you've been going for, you know, four or five years between the two of you. So very exciting. Mm -hmm. And Telluride, of course, is you know, famous for being, you know, a film, a real film connoisseurs film festival. So you're both going to talk today about some of your favorite films you saw there. Uh, maybe you want to just, um, first of all, before you get into your reviews, talk about like what the vibe was this year um, compared to previous years. Yeah, we were actually talking about this yesterday. We had a lunch uh, sort of catch up meeting since, since Telluride, which uh, as of this recording was almost a month ago. It's over Labor Day weekend. I don't know. It, it felt a little, um, I think the lineup felt a little thin compared to previous years. There wasn't as star heavy, you know, there weren't those big star vehicles. There were definitely some star vehicles there, but not as many as in previous years and not as many stars. I don't know, what did you think, Kaylee? Yeah, I mean, I was obviously bummed Timothy Chalamet was not there, so, because <laughs> um, he was at other festivals. But um, I think, um, you know, I thought that at first, but then after you start going to the movies and seeing who actually is there, you're like, oh wait, there is a lot of people here. It's just not like, you know, I think maybe some of the movies weren't movies that I was very familiar with. And so it's not, I think anything like Judy or anything that everyone's gonna be talking about or kind of mainstream movies. It kind of seemed to be smaller, yeah. it's very documentary heavy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Telluride in general is very, uh, you know, we don't find out what movies they're showing until th literally the day before. Um, you know, there's no, the press that are there, they don't give any press passes. So there's no paparazzi. You might see one person with a camera taking pictures. But even if you see a famous person walking down the street, like it's not like they're mobbed. It's just like, hey, how are you doing? You know, yeah. so it's very chill. And I think that's why people go to Telluride. It's very different than you know, obviously Ernie, you've been to some of the other festivals, you know, some of the bigger festivals and especially Venice, which is going on at the same time. Which is like um, the opposite. Everyone's so different. Out yeah. Outfits. Yeah. 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 And then what's really cool is that um, a lot of the stars that do go, they go to see the other movies. They see each other's movies. And what's really cool yeah. is that the theater that I'm at, uh, the Herzog Theater, uh, stay tuned in episode two, where we'll talk more about Herzog. Uh, but the theater that he uh, sort of named after him is one of the bigger theaters yeah. and we'll always block off VIP seats for for the VIPs and um, women talking had a real big contingent of, of cast and crew. So almost every screening you'd see somebody from women talking uh, there at the film, you know, watching someone else's film. So that's really cool is that you get to see them watching other people's films and kind of seeing like, Oh, like what else, what is everyone else up to? And you know, they're just yeah. into the whole Oscar thing like everyone else. That's very cool. So we have six movies today, so we have to go a little quickly. Uh, you each picked three of some of your favorites that you saw from the film festival. And I will say when you guys sent me your movies, I was like, well, this lineup, at least the, the six that we're gonna talk about here, these are all pretty heavy duty directors. These are some of the major auteurs of our time. So yeah. I was pretty excited uh, for this episode and I haven't seen any of these movies. So Haley, why don't you kick it off with your first one? <laughs> Okay, so the first one is Women Talking, which is directed by Sarah Polly, and she actually was what she was the director who received a tribute at Telluride. So she was there a lot with almost the entire, I think the entire cast of Women Talking was there, which, you know, I just saw them everywhere. 
Um, the movie is about um, women who, a group of uh, women who lived in this isolated religious community. I think it was Mennonites who grappled with kind of reconciling their reality with their faith. Um, it's based on a novel um, by Miriam Toes. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, um, but it stars Rooney Mara, Claire Foy, Jesse Buckley, Francis McDormand. And it's really, just like it says, it's women talking. So it's a, mainly a group of women um, you know, they've all, uh, most of them have had to deal with this horrific, um, you know, uh, sexual uh, assaults that have happened throughout the community and they're grappling with what to do. Should they stay in the community? Should they leave? You know, there's a lot of, so it's a lot of very tough conversations and flashbacks to what actually happened um, to them, to children, to what mm -hmm. they were told happened. Um, you know, so it's a very, it's a, it's a heavy movie. And I loved it. Um, I thought, um, you know, I was very moved by it and I really got sucked in and it was very, you know, I was obviously crying through a lot of it, you know, so um, I really liked it. Yeah, I, I love this movie as well. I think maybe second favorite, uh, very close to maybe first favorite uh, of the festival. It is heavy, but there's actually, I was surprised how funny it is. There's some funny moments. There's a uh, uh some funny characters that you know i don't want to i don't want to spoil it too much but there's definitely some some light moments to sort of balance it out and it's literally just women talking and it, it it's almost in real time it's it sort of uh think of like 12 angry men uh i think it takes place over maybe like a couple of days of yeah where these women are sort of all the men <clears throat> what what's happened is that uh all of the men in this community, it's a small community, maybe, I don't know, what would you say, like 100 people at, at most? And so maybe all, all of the men have been arrested and are in jail uh, over the series of rapes that have occurred in, you know, in the last couple of months. Uh, so all the men are out of town. They're in jail for a couple of days while they post bail and sort of figure out what to do. And the women are sort of figuring out, well, what do we do when, before the men come back? Are we, yeah. do we just leave? Do we stay and fight or stay and be quiet? Um, and so it's sort of a real time sort of uh, uh, discussion between these women. And there's, and there's definitely, there's women that are like, yay, we have to fight. And these other women that are like, you know, what good is that? We just need to shut up and sort of accept our place. Um, and, and, and for being, a film of just people talking it's it's really engaging and of course um yeah. you know who's going to get the acting nominations out of this cast i mean there's you know they're all going to be competing against each other for supporting actors this is one of the, the issues thing... with the academy for years i've said they need to have an ensemble award like other mm -hmm. award ceremonies do like the independent spirit awards has the best cast ensemble because when you have a five or six person cast that they're all phenomenal why pit them against each other when there's no one lead right yeah, not really. I mean, there were a couple women probably who talked more. Uh, <laughs> right. But, they were all uh, <laughs> talking, though. <laughs> um, one of the things I really liked about this was, um, you know, Frances McDormand, um, you know, who's probably the biggest uh, star in this movie. She literally is just walking around. I mean, I think I saw her like four or five times. I saw her at so many movies. She's very approachable. I know Ernie and I were sitting in front of the Herzog and she walked by and I had just seen the movie. So we were like, you know, Ernie says something like, we love you, France, you know, Francis. And I was like, beautiful movie, you know, and yeah. she was, you know, kind of waved and, you know, said thanks, you know, so that was the cool part. And Rooney Mara, um, Claire Foy and Jesse Buckley were sitting right in front of me at a couple of movies, you know, so they were kind of all out in full force. So that was really cool. Really great. So glad yeah. to see Sarah Pauly return to the screen. She's actually one of my favorite <coughs> uh filmmakers in terms of ones i've seen uh, her last three films were all made my top 10 list so mm -hmm. stories we tell was in my top 10 away from her so i'm really excited to see this one so this is want, i want to make sure that see. um you know men don't get turned off by this movie you know you you think like oh these religious uh, who cares about them? Women. <laughs> but uh i think you know and it's not a you know it's not an anti-men bashing thing at all um <clears throat> I, I think it, I think it's a real important film for anybody to see of any gender, um, and so I, I I would hope I think Angela, your audience is is sophisticated enough that they're not going to be turned off by this by the subject matter. I think but, our uh, audience will see this cast and be like, yeah, we need to see it, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, at least that's the way I, I when any, I saw it, especially Jesse Buckley for us. Anybody on right the now. fence of like, oh, I don't know, uh, just go see it. It's amazing. It's great. Okay, well, we got to move on because we got five, four more, five more movies. So go ahead, Ernie. 
so I think my favorite film of the festival uh, is called Tar, uh, with an accent over the E. Uh, they they talked about that. It's 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 based on the accent name over of the A character or the A. Uh, uh, so it's not about uh, uh, retarring roads or anything about that. Uh, it's about <laughs> this composer, uh, Lydia Tar, fictional composer. Uh, played by Kate Blanchett uh, and directed by Todd Field. Uh, Todd Field, it, it's it's crazy. Todd Field has not made a movie in like 15 years in a long, yeah. long time. Uh, and his previous films, which were which were good, Little Children and um, In the Bedroom, really are no indication of of Tar. I mean, Tar is just light years ahead of those films i mean those are those are good films this is an amazing film this is like masterpiece this is truly a film you know that where it gets used a lot i i can call it a masterpiece this is which is just i don't know what he's been doing for the last 15 years uh working on this film so uh which he said that he wrote specifically for kate blanchett and said that if she didn't agree to do it he was not going to do this film yeah. uh so in his film kate blanchett plays a composer who um is the first female composer of I think is the Berlin Philharmonic. She's working on a recording of uh, of a Mahler concert and which is sort of seen as sort of like her the capstone of her career and as she's sort of working on this her personal uh, and professional life sort of starts to fall apart. Yeah. And so it kind of goes in directions in things uh, it almost becomes like a psychological thriller at one point. It really goes in a lot of interesting directions that, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil too much about, uh, but it's just obviously Kate Blanchett, a tour de force. Uh, I think she learned, she learned how to conduct to be in this movie. You know, she learned, she speaks French, she speaks German, but is such and she a plays a piano and she plays a piano. I mean, she, I mean, her German is, uh, She's so good, like I almost forget like what what her background is because her accents are so amazing and she does such a good job. She's as good as a natural speaker. So uh, for me, it just it just blew me away. It sounds like she could be the Oscar contender. What did you think? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. yeah, I definitely liked it. I thought it was too long. Um, it, you know, uh, when you see a lot of movies, you're, you just have to be a little bit, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I think it definitely could have been cut a little bit. Um, she, uh, Clay Blanchett was there. She was uh, the tribute actor for the, fil for the film festival. So I was there for the tribute. Um, so that was cool because they had like, kind of a longer Q and A with her and they showed um, kind of a retrospective of all of her films, um, which I realized I have not seen a lot of her films, you know, or they just chose really weird films to be in the retrospective that I had not seen. So, but yeah, it's definitely a really great movie. Um, and I'm sure that she will get nominated. Yeah. Well, that's another one that's going to be top of my list. And like you said, Ernie, I'm a fan of Todd Field, but I also, when I saw he directed this, I was kind of like, oh, what was the last movie he did? Uh, like you said, The Little Children, that was Kate Winslet. That was uh, quite a while ago. So, um, so yeah, I'm very excited for this one. Do you know uh, when this one is coming out? Um, I think it's going to be an Oscar contender. So Yeah, I think this is, this is in, uh, uh, actually later this month, uh, late October. Okay, later in October. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, Haley, I know you're excited to talk about your Timmy, so let's yes. move well, on. Well, this was, I think this was definitely my favorite film of the festival. Um, I'm a big horror fan, and this kind of uh, satiated all of my needs with this movie, uh, Bones and All. Um, it's basically about this young girl who's learning how to live with her need to eat uh, humans. <laughs> uh, she meets uh, Timothy Chalamet and Mark Rylance. Uh, Timothy Chalamet obviously is her age, Mark Rylance is, an, is an older, and they both also have kind of this same, I guess you would say, affliction. Um, uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, how to be in this world. Um, they could smell each other, um, you know, so it's kind of a, a kind of a new age cannibal horror. It's very gory, um, you know, film. Uh, it's directed by Luca um, Guadagnino, yeah. is that how you say it? Okay. And he also worked with Chalamet in Call Me By Your Name. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought it was just, I just loved it. You know, uh, the screening that I was at, uh, there were many people who walked out um, kind of during different levels of the film, you know, kind of the first gory scene, you saw people move out. The next gory scene, you saw more people walk out. 
the next scene, you know, so it's kind of interesting. I don't understand people walk out on movies at film festivals. I've never understood <laughs> I that. I mean, unless it's just like unwatchable, but like, well, I yeah, think I, just, I don't get it. Was, it. I don't. It was I very never gory. Yeah, no, I get gory. it. But like, if you're a film so, person, you should be ready for anything. Yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, well, yeah. In, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm desensitized, or I didn't think it was that gory at all. I don't. I don't know. I I didn't. Uh, it was pretty gory. I didn't. I think it was. I mean, I've seen I've seen much worse, and I think they well, yeah. do it in a they do it in a way that uh, is not sensational sensationalistic, or like a typical sort of slasher thing. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe it's kind of more realistic. Maybe that's why it seems more intense. But yeah, you honest, feel for these. You feel for the them because yeah, it's not like they want to be eating people. Like they have, yeah. they, they just have to. It's yeah. you know, in order to live. Yeah, you know. And to be it's honest, a choice. This was this was uh, this is not a typical Telluride film. To be honest, uh, you know, the Telluride audience I think is like older sort of. It is the yeah. Oscar bait type stuff. So I think yeah. the that audience, yeah, they're not going to be. They're not going to be used to that kind of stuff and you know that's, right. I think that's something you'd expect more like south by southwest or slam or fantastic yeah. fest yeah for yeah. sure uh but mark rylance i really liked i oh, mean he's, he was fabulous. he's great he's great in everything uh but i thought he was really really good in the supporting role and sort of uh again i don't want to spoil it but sort of a twist uh to his character uh but i thought he sort of plays like this older mentor that shows him you know, like they didn't, they never fully explain what this disease or condition is, but he's sort yeah. of, I mean, he's been living it for a while. So he kind of is able to be like, well, this is how you eat people. And this is how you do this. And this is how you like, you know, sort of trap them. And, you know, uh, so he's sort of like the, the, the mentor, uh, mentor zombie or mentor ca cannibal or whatever, you, whatever it is. And there. he was so creepy. I'm sure that he's going to get, you know, yeah. big accolades for this. He was fantastic in it. And an interesting movie for Luca to follow up Call Me By Your Name with, you know, because obviously not, you know, that one's kind of more of an elegant, you know, we're in Italy, and, you know, so a very different style of movie. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, definitely. And, uh, yeah, so um, we'll go on to the next one, which I know is probably a very controversial choice for you, Ernie, based on what I've been reading about this one. So um, I think you're in the minority on this one. I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm still, this is a film I'm still wrestling with uh, a month later. So uh, it's called Bardo. Uh, or the, well, the full title is, I have to get this right, Bardo or False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths. Uh, and this is directed by uh, Alejandro Gonzalez Inolito, uh, filmmaker from Mexico, who I'm sure uh, viewers know. Uh, this was his first film actually that he's made in Mexico since Amores Peros, almost 20 years. Oh, wow. uh, so he's been making films obviously uh, around the world. So this is sort of his return to Mexico. This is, another, this is a three hour long movie. Uh, I And I don't know, I still don't and know. And it feels I, like three hours. I don't know if I like it. I mean, I really, oh, I do like it. I admire it. I don't know if I love it. Um, I do want to see it again. Uh, he's edited, uh, he's edited 22 minutes out of it uh, just in the last uh, weeks, you know, that it premiered at Venice and then played in Telluride. So he's sort of, you know, he's watched it with an audience. And so he's, cut 22 minutes out of it so I'm interested to see if that makes it any better you know uh, it's is he doing that by choice or does it is this I, know, I think he did I know it's coming no, out he, on Netflix he totally yeah. did it by choice I mean it's this is a Netflix movie you know Netflix sort of gave him a blank check uh he produced it so it's basically which was a, a lot of problems with the film is that he didn't have to answer to anyone he sort of does he did whatever he wanted and so it is it is very pretentious it's very uh, I don't know if I can say this word or for lack of a better, it's, it's masturbatory. I mean, it's just, it, it's about a filmmaker and a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's a filmmaker making a film, a lot of filmmaker, and it's sort of like a pretentious filmmaker, but he himself is already pretentious. So is he, you know, he does make self, he does make fun of himself in the film. So. He makes fun of himself. Sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I still, again, it's a film I'm wrestling with. I, I, like I said, I admire it, but I don't know if I love it. Mm -hmm. So many filmmakers have done this type of thing, and we all have Fellini to blame with Nine and a Half, the idea it's of the so dream Fellini. world. It is exactly... Yeah, the dream world and, yeah. and a filmmaker, the artist contemplating their art, and it's usually a male in middle age having their yes. existential crisis, and we've seen this movie over and over again, oh, so yes. I was a little surprised. You know, Inaratu, he's a, di a director that I um, admire. He's not one of my favorite. 
favorites of the Mexican American filmmakers, like uh, Alfonso Cuaron or someone who is just like batting a hundred for me. I mean, like with Alejandro, like sometimes I love his films, sometimes they make me cringe, but um, I wondered after the Revenant and all the big success he had with that in the Oscars, if he was like, oh, now I'm really gonna go for it. Cause I'm gonna get this big check from Netflix and I'm gonna make the movie I really wanted to make, you know? But so. again, I mean, even, even the title itself, I mean, his titles are long and pretentious. Like that's, that's exactly what the film is. And it's so much eight and a half. It's so uh, right. I should have said eight and a half. I think I said nine and a half, which is actually the sequel to eight and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's very Fellini, like everyone. Uh, and I don't know what happened with COVID. I don't know if all these filmmakers now are like, oh, I'm going to make my own personal film. You know, uh, uh, Kenneth Branagh made Belfast, and uh, uh, you know, just everyone is sort of like did the same thing of like reevaluating their lives and. I don't know. They're all kind of saying the same. They all thing. had time to think indoors, shut in for too too much. <laughs> so. I know Haley didn't like it. <laughs> no, I liked it. I just thought it was too long. It needed to be edited, and yeah. it and to have a three hour movie, um, I think it's perfect for Netflix because people can stop it and go to the bathroom. You know, when you're watching <laughs> that was Haley's in the main theater, complaint when she texted me from the theater, she's like, "When are you supposed to go to the bathroom in these movies?" Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they need to have like, if they show it in the theater, they need to have an intermission because you don't want to leave because you don't want to miss something, yeah. but you have to go to the bathroom, yeah. you know? And so literally, as soon as the movie ended, everyone bolted to go to the bathroom and I had right. to come back because there was a and a you know, but you know, you can't enjoy yeah. it if you're sitting there like, when is this movie going to end so I can go to the bathroom? Like you're you know? squirming in your seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a, uh, they should do like the old movies, Lawrence of Arabia, they did an intermission and they put the musical score on and mm -hmm. allow people to get a refreshment, go to the restroom, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't do that, that too much that anymore. There, that there are a couple of sequences in this film that are just amazing, that are probably some of the most memorable things I've seen uh, in cinema of the year, uh, but that just a lot of crap. It just a lot. So it's just, it's very mixed bag. Um, very mixed bag. Okay. So it was very you know, it was very surreal and had some really crazy amazing scenes and you're just like whoa you know that's nothing I've I haven't seen that before. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, Haley, you should move on to your yeah. next one because I only have a few minutes. Okay. So okay. Go ahead. So Empire of Light is my next one, directed by Sam Mendes. Uh, this was set in the early '80s in England. Um, it's uh, about a woman who, played by Olivia Coleman who works at a, a cinema, movie theater. And she's kind of trying to find her way in life. Um, you know, has, she's single, but she kind of, you know, always falls for the wrong person. And a young black employee um, starts working at the theater and she kind of has a little fling with him. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, it's set in the early eighties. So this obviously is, you know, during, I mean, we still have it, but during, a lot of race issues and a lot of stuff going on, which which that explores. Um, this was the uh, the main, wasn't it? The international, uh, uh, you know, the first time anyone has seen, yeah, the preview. Yeah. Um, so the the theater was packed. Um, Ernie actually thought I got kicked out because I had to move seats. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, everybody is, wanted to see it. So yeah, this was um, this was the literal world premiere. This is the first yeah. audience ever oh, wow. watching it. So it was yeah. really really great. Yeah. Yeah, and I loved it. I love Olivia Coleman pretty much in everything she's in. Um, so I loved it. And I think this was uh, probably one of the more mainstream films. Yeah, um, it's definitely, you know, it was, it was, it's the most Oscar baity of the films yeah. uh, that we're talking about. I think maybe you liked it a little bit better than me. Uh, I mean, I liked it overall. Uh, I mean, it's a movie about movies. It's a movie about going to the movies. It's a movie about a movie theater. So I'm but it's also, that. but yeah, but it's also about this woman, you yeah, know. And I think yeah. if you can connect with the woman, which I think I did, because Olivia Coleman is such a fantastic actor, then that's why I really liked it. And I, I kind of connected with her, you know, and yeah. her relationship with this other employee. And also, Colin Firth is in it. Um, she plays, or he plays her boss, you know, so it's just got a lot of great actors in it. Yeah, the only thing I ding it for, well, two things, is that uh, Olivia Coleman, you know, she plays crazy so well, uh, that I feel like maybe she's getting typecast as like the crazy lady, um, you know, in, in the favorite. and in, mentally in, anguished lost, all the lost time. Daughter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, uh, but she does it so well. So, um, so that I kind of like, well, I don't need to see you go crazy again. Uh, and then I felt like there's maybe like a couple of elements too many because it's like it's about a movie theater. It's about her. It's it's a May December romance. It's an interracial romance. Then there's like race things. It's like about five different things and maybe 
I don't know, maybe one or two of them felt a little too extraneous or, or felt a little too much. Like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just felt like it was trying to do like five different things. And too many things for me. Yeah, it was a little, a little unfocused. So it uh, might be, gosh, another year of Kate Blanchett against Olivia Colman <laughs> at the Oscars. Yeah. It's like, can we get a, can we get a, 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 you know, another person in there? Maybe I love those two actresses, but it just seems like every year it's. The same but people. I do, I do like how. Uh, so at the end of the, uh, well, actually, no, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say. Anything. Yeah, no. don't spoil it. Well, not going to. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Uh, Angela on uh, episode after you see it. Okay. When do, is this one coming out? I'm assuming this is going to be a theatrical release. So. I think it's a theatrical, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I know Bardo comes out on Netflix, but I think this one's theatrical. Okay. Ernie, you're going to wrap us up here. You got it like less than a minute to talk okay. about the so, Wonder. Uh, the, Wonder uh, the Wonder is directed by a, a Chilean director, Sebastian Lilo, uh, but this is in English. Um, it uh, stars Florence Pugh. It's it's the other movie with Florence Pugh. Uh, <laughs> the one that's actually good. The one that's actually good. Uh, so in it, it takes place in the 1800s. Uh, she plays a nurse that is sent to investigate um, this family in a small village. Uh, uh, this is in Ireland, I believe, uh, where they claim, the family claims that the daughter hasn't eaten for months and that all she's mm -hmm. surviving on is the manna from heaven you know the word of god is mm -hmm. what's sustaining her that she doesn't need to eat uh and so her and a nun are sort of sent to investigate the claims of this of this family and this young girl and um she's sort of uh, a very sort of scientific minded uh you know exploring what happens and uh you know so it goes into the, all these religious issues like is this family conning people is this is she really a saint like what's going on uh and she seems to be the only one that sort of is taking this rational sort of scientific approach and really wants to find out the answers the other people everyone in the village uh everyone else that's sort of investigating this are, are sort of easy to accept the answer that oh it's the word of god that that is sustaining her it sounds so really I think, fascinating. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so it deals with a lot of, again, a lot of uh, religious and also religious issues in terms of women, in terms of like women's roles in religion and sort of, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, how they fit within society. So in an odd way, I think a, a, a good counterpart to women talking. Yeah, interesting. Did you like this one, Haley? Actually, I we have to wrap it. up did not see this one yeah and no. i love this director i loved a fantastic woman and gloria so i'm super excited to see this one and gloria, I hope it gets yeah, distribution. It, yeah this is this is uh it's netflix so it's all it's gonna get a limited theatrical uh i think in november and okay. then um like two weeks and later netflix. then on netflix yeah okay. okay awesome well we have to run but this has been great like six great movies for everyone to look forward to out there thank you ernie and Haley. uh this has been real film snobs uh you can go to our website and facebook and i won't repeat all the other stuff but thank you very much have a great day and great bye. movies bye <laughs>